Trump, I don't want to ever necessarily have coffee with him or whatever. I don't, I really, I really don't care what he tweets. I never cared. I never read a single tweet of Trump. Never. I, I just didn't care. It's not important to me. What's important to me? What's he doing on immigration? What's he doing on the economy? What's he doing for black and brown uh, uh, unemployment rates? What's he doing for interest rates? What's he doing for around the world? We had peace, John. We had peace. Uh, no wars. Uh, people respected us. I look at all that stuff. That's what matters to me. And if I have to vote again uh, for a guy I don't necessarily like, uh, I'm going to vote for him. <laughs>
Um, Frank DeFilippo. Oh, uh, yeah. Steve Durham. Uh, um, Cliff Dodge. Um, Ann Gorsuch. Really? Yes, yes. She, Ann Gorsuch. Ann Gorsuch, mother, Gorsuch, mother of the Supreme, Supreme Court, Court Justice. Justice. Right? Wow. Yeah, yeah, she was dynamite. Um, and, uh, I mean, brilliant, brilliant lady. Um, but apparently crazy. Well, she, yeah, as we all were. Uh, and uh, let me think. Guy, guy, Bob Stevenson from, from uh, Colorado Springs, another guy from Colorado Springs named Randall. I can remember all this now because just a few weeks ago I saw somebody sent me a picture uh, that was t t she took out of the Statesman. Yeah, you know, and uh, I was standing in the thing, and I was going through and thought, "Oh my gosh!" Um, so that was that was about it. Then more people, you know, the ones that want the wannabes, the wannabe crazies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They'd say they were, but they'd that, say they were, but they weren't really they weren't crazy. crazy. They like weren't you. really as crazy. What did you like so much about the legislature? You you really gobbled it up. Well, yeah. I mean, come um, on, you love the, this stuff. The the wages. <laughs> If I recall, it was, was that twelve grand a year? It was thirteen. Then? Thirteen. <laughs> thirteen thousand a year. Well, that's better than what you snookered me into, which was two hundred and fifty dollars a month to be on the RTD board. But it also came yeah, with every, a, you got free rides everywhere. I got a free Come bus on. pass. Oh, it right. came with a free bus pass. Guy. And let me tell you, the ladies like a man with a bus, <laughs> bus pass. pass. Oh, I, yeah. I knew we could get that. Anyway, um, so the legislature. I will tell you that that is an interesting story. I think. Of course, I think my whole life is really fascinating, but um, and I think about it often now, uh, especially in, in light of what is happening on the national scale, right, and the national scene. There is so much um, hatred, and I can't think of another word yeah. to explain what divides the, the two groups, parties, whatever. The personal animosities, oh, God. the personal attacks. It's the, incredible, isn't yeah. it? And there's, there's one other aspect that differentiates this time from that, and, this, and that's this. In six years, when I was in the legislature, Republicans, Democrats, we argued about Republican and Democrat stuff, mostly taxes, <laughs> regulations, things like that, okay? Education stuff, yeah, we would, but mostly because of the fiscal impact. of it. Never, I do not remember a single time in those six years that we ever argued about the essence of America. How do you mean? I mean, everybody argued about the, you might call it peripheral things, I, I don't know, but everybody really kind of loved the country. Yeah. And, 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 ex, and respected it. I, I don't remember. And, any, and <clears throat> the state, that Colorado you know, was oh. not a plaything to, uh, mm. to be manipulated, it was, it was uh, a place to be protected. It was a place to make sure that people could thrive. It wasn't, it wasn't a social experiment. No, that is for sure. And so, and, and of course the Republicans control the House and Senate. But you know what's interesting, another thing that's interesting is that now this is gone, totally. But at the time, Colorado was sort of um, schizophrenic politically because we had often, in, in fact, in 1974, we lost the House because of Watergate. It actually right. came down to that. We lost the House. We held on to the Senate by one vote, the state Senate. Um, but all before that, we hadn't lost the House for 40 years. And, and all after it for, I can't remember how long, it stayed a Republican in the House and Senate and a Democrat as, as governor. As governor. Uh, Lamb and, and uh, uh, who else? Romer. <laughs> Romer. Uh, and, and, but I mean, I'm trying to think of the other, the uh, Republicans. Um, yeah, you know, love, love before that. Yeah. And, and then, um, you know, more, more recently. And the last Republican, I was guess. Was Bill Owens, Bill right. Owens, right. So, who, who might be separated by 24 years of Democratic governors and that's right. 24 years of Democratic governors. Right. And, you know, um, Lamb was pretty... I thought he was a fairly reasonable fellow. I became friends with him long after he was um, governor. And mind you, he's an older man, and he, he was one of the most free-thinking politicians. He would always checked his own premises. And I go back and wonder, oh my God, if only Colorado had 
you know, the 60-year-old lamb instead of the 30-year-old lamb, what, what might be different. But I mean, you, would, you and he partnered we were on up the on same, things. We were on the same stage together, on the same side of the debate together, uh, more than once, and that right. was immigration. Yeah. Illegal immigration. Boy. He was, he never, he, like you, never had a problem standing up to his own party right. when he thought they were wrong. Right. They, and, you know, he was, a, he was on the, he was a chairman or something, or, no, he was on the board of the, uh, of a couple of organizations uh, that were pretty prestigious and threw him off because right. of his, uh, because of his stand on, on that. I, I can, I know how that kind of feels, but, um, the, and I, and I really did respect him in many ways and there, you know, got a lot of time for other stories, but one of the things I did as a member of the house, which I couldn't believe we got done, uh, we had a, a really doofy program in Colorado for, uh, I think 45 years. And, uh, it was the, um, auto inspection. Oh God, I hated that. It yeah. Was, everybody yeah, hated that. Everybody hated it. And I hated it. I was up in Montana driving my father-in-law's car. And, uh, and I lo noticed there was no, no sticker, you know, and I said to him, I said, don't you have a, no, what the hell are you talking about? So I got back and had the legislative council. I said, just check and see. All the states that don't have this and what their uh, uh, accident per 100,000 miles right. happens to be against the ones that do. And for Guess people who might not be following, you used to have to go take your car to a garage, yes. not for an emissions test, but for them to check the brakes and right. and, 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 and the tires. Oh, and they go like yeah, this. I gotta oh, need to do it. Need to big do. problem here. Look yeah. at this. You know, and these are, oh, gee, okay, new tires and new brakes. And, you know, all right. You know, I mean, they just, it was a terrible riff off. So I, I introduced the bill, abolish the program. <laughs> I mean, everybody, yeah, this has been on the books for 45 years and, you know, safety and all that safety. stuff. Come on. And I said, well, I'm telling you, it's not any safe. In fact, the st states that don't have this have a lower accident rate per 100,000 miles. So um, I got it sort of moving. It wasn't going crazy, but I go to the, to the transportation committee. I'm sitting waiting to right. introduce my little bill. And uh, <laughs> says, and at the time, you have the Garage Owners Association or whatever right. in there asking for an increase in the, it, they, they were getting eight bucks. They wanted to go to 10 for the sticker. Oh, they couldn't make it for this. You, this is just, they're taking a lot of time and blah, blah, blah. And so I'm just listening to her. Well, they, they don't kill the bill, but they don't pass it either. They put, put it on the, it was called tabling, but not really, because that, that usually does it. But they just put it away for a minute and let me speak, come down. Because they right. said, oh, we got another bill here just on the same thing. You know, come here, Tancredo. And what do you think about this? And I said, oh, I think it's ridiculous because they don't deserve $8, let alone 10. But I said, we don't, this program is terrible. And I went through my whole speech right. and about, and I gave them all the statistics, right? We get done. They ask if they can come back while I'm still, <laughs> they, they come back to speak and they go, for the elderly, we'll do it for nothing. Oh, oh, they, they, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it was great. And everybody goes, what? You just got, you can't do it. You, you know, <laughs> you just got to tell them that you couldn't do it for 10. Pass that, and so they pass my bill. Pass that out of that out of that committee. Goes uh, to the floor of the house. I get uh, that was really. I, was, I only been in for like you know it was my first, maybe my second term, and didn't pass any. <laughs> this was just right. really amazing to me that I got it. <clears throat> One day I'm sitting on the house floor. I wish I could remember this guy's name. Get a card from a guy who had a um, million uh, uh, window treat. Uh, uh, Replace your window thing, right. you know, auto, automobile re, window replacement. And uh, it was a very familiar name at the time. I can't remember now, but sends me this little card. I'd like to speak to you. Okay, I'm sitting on, you can, you can bring them in and sit on the On the sideline, side. right. And I'm sitting there and he comes in and he says, I just want to tell you, I give a lot of money to the Republican Party. And I said, that's a good idea, great. He said, I give a lot of money to uh, candidates, Republican candidates. I said, is that even better? I can give him money. He said, I can give you a lot of money. I said, terrific. <laughs> he goes, all you have to do is drop this. Oh, really? Yeah. I said, what? What? And I mean, I was just so stunned in a way. Because it, it just never had happened. You know, that, that, that somebody, ooh, that blatant. That blatant. 
Drop so, the bill. I'll give you a give bunch money. of money. Right. So, I, <laughs> oh, geez, how stupid. But <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to do. And so Bill Purcell, God love him, I'm sure he's passed away, uh, but he was the sergeant at arms. This big oh, black guy, yeah. uh, you know, with the gray hair, very kind of distinct. And it's just, it's a nothing. You know, he's a political payoff. He's been a, he was a Democrat on top of it, but he'd been there a hundred years. Right. Everybody loved Bill Purcell. He was a nice guy. I see him, I said, Sergeant, <laughs> come over here. And he comes over and I said, I want you, this guy, to repeat what you just did. I said, this guy just tried to bribe me. And, and, and he, who, whatever it is, takes his card and he throws it at me and he gets up and walks out. And Purcell says to me, what the hell did you want me to do? <laughs> and I said, I don't know. I said, I just, I, I just never had anything like that happen. And I didn't know what to do. And he says, well, I couldn't have done crap about it. But anyway, that was the end of that. So it goes on, goes to the Senate, passes. Oh, no, I'm, yeah, passes. Lamb calls me in. That's the whole point right. of this story. Lamb calls me and he goes, um, hey, listen, he said, I, I don't like this. He said, this is dangerous, you know, very dangerous. We can't do this. We've had this. I said, hey, Governor, honestly, it's not. We're having dinner in the, in the governor's mansion. It was pretty nifty. First time I'd ever yeah. been in there. He said, yeah, no, he came with Tom. He, he said, um, he said, uh, I, I just, and so I went through my whole spiel. It's okay. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. He goes, all right, I'll tell you this. <clears throat> we'll do this. We'll do a reverse sunset. I, I will agree to that if you'll amend the bill or else I'll veto it. <clears throat> and I said, what, does you, I don't, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean a reverse, <laughs> reverse sunset? sunset? And he goes, we'll let it go. We'll let it go for two years. If the legis but the legislature has, has to, to renew it after two years or it goes away. So in other words, we'll do it your way but in two years, if they don't say, we're going to keep the, the inspection gone. They have they to have to back. vote on it again okay. and pass it again or else. What could uh, I say? Yeah. And I said, okay. <laughs> and so right. we did, and it did, and it passed, and that was that. Yeah. And it was that. Got a big newspaper thing I'm holding with my sponsor, whoever, co-sponsor, uh, Tank Crater. Oh, I, I mean, that was the first thing I think I ever really passed. I remember my old man. I don't know these inspections. I don't, I got to go down there and then they tell me I need a new windshield wiper and they saw right. that. Right. But every, that was the whole thing. It was a, it was a total scam, especially so, for elderly. So the payoff, take that and move forward to your time at DC. Because mm. I got to imagine some guy who fixes broken windshields, who loves this program because then he's got to fix every broken windshield. Right. Uh, when you go to DC, how much was that little story amplified to mm. corporatism, to, oh, to, well, to an industry, to what? Got to be honest with you, nothing like that ever happened again on, a, on any scale. N nobody it's, ever. It's more out front, isn't it? Well, they, you just, yeah, of course. I mean, the speaker would come to you and go, hey, what are you doing with this? Are you crazy? We got a lot of money from those people. Right. You know, that that yeah. kind of thing. That happened a lot. I mean, on immigration, that happened yeah. constantly. And I was called in on more than one occasion. Well, on the, I don't live in there again a short time. There's a thing called the Republican caucus on Wednesday morning, Democrat caucus also two places, you know, not together, God knows. And um, plot and scheme, what are you right. gonna do for the week? And <clears throat> but if you have a few minutes left at the end, a member can sign up to give us a little speech about his little piece of heaven. Right. Whatever they're excited about. And every year, week I'd do it, every week they'd turn me down. Can't speak too late. Oh, okay. But somebody else did. Well, they just got in before you did. Finally, the caucus chair was absent, and the assistant caucus chair, whatever, uh, said, uh, I asked her, and she says, Yeah, I don't care. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I have five minutes. I wheel in this, this great big TV monitor and the VCR thing below it because right. I have a tape. I have a VCR tape. That it was a silent, it was a, um, yeah, there was no sound. It was a um, uh, infrared camera on the top of a building in the in a little hut thing in uh, or ocean, or, uh, 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 oh gosh. Um, and there's a park along the, just along the border. Oregon Pike Cactus there you go. National Park. 
uh, it's, you know, there's all kinds of campers and they're right on the border. It's nighttime. And you see this like fire along the side of the camp, but it's not fire. It's human heat and you know, right. emanating off their bodies while they're all lying on the ground or whatever, waiting for the, uh, whatever to time to come through. So about midnight, I guess, or so, all of a sudden this little fire thing looks like it gets up and, and you can see it string out. Oh my God, that's, those are people. And then they start coming through the park, this, this park air, RV area. And there's all these park, I mean, all these RVs all over the place, right? And they're wandering through them. And the first guy, has got a M16 or automatic rifle of some sort holding. Behind him, all the guys carrying drugs, packs of drugs. Behind them, another guy would sit in there. And it went on and on and on, all wandering through this thing. And I kept thinking, some, I can just see some old guy, you know, hey, Mabel. <laughs> Hey, Mabel, look at this. And, and they, they went through and they went in. That's all it was. That's all it was. Four minutes. Four and what minutes. did it do after you showed it? The end of four minutes. It started out, there were 220 some members. At the end of four minutes, there was maybe a half a dozen left in the room. And when they went out, they were not nasty. They were not happy. They, they, what do you, you know, why do you show, what are you bringing this for? And uh, that was my first, that was the introduction to my caucus and my issue and their response, which was walk out on this, but I'm not, I don't want, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to, because. I don't want to see it. Don't want to look at it. Don't want to know about it. Right. Exactly. So, and the, and the fact is that just even now, you know, there's so many Republicans there who are still on the tip. Let's talk about that for a second. You took immigration. Which, by the way, when I think of you, na nationwide, you're known as the immigration guy. You ran mm. for president, immigration guy. That was it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I know you. I'm like, Tom, immigration's important, but I know Tom, education is, yeah. is the guiding star. Yeah. But talk about Im uh, immigration for, for a while. You were Trump without the money. Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> that was my last book. I was, I was Trump without the money. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you saw this, this issue before anyone else. Trump, Trump took the issue and it, it brought him to the presidency and by your hat here today, I'm guessing yep. you're thinking he's going to bring it to, to, the, uh, uh, to 2024. Why is it that it resonates so much with Americans, but it doesn't resonate with Congress? Money. Follow the money. That is the truest. No, there's, one, there's a better axiom uh, <clears throat> I have found for politics in general. Never, ever heard a better uh, explanation of the problem with the democracy that we are we have created, uh, and that is uh, when you rob Peter to pay Paul, you can always count on Paul's vote. Right. Right? That is the truest axiom. I mean, absolutely true. All you have to do is create, uh, you know, the U.S. Department of Education. We couldn't get, you asked why, we, it was only in there a year and a half before Reagan took over. And Reagan couldn't get rid of the Department we of Education. We couldn't get anybody to carry a bill. Not carry a bill. It had only been there a year and a half. And it was always... It, it was Do you need a bill to get rid of a department? Oh, yeah. This one was created by a bill. See? Uh, under Carter. So you, you, he, couldn't, he couldn't... He can't do it by fiat. No. You got it to... You, you know, there's, uh, I've forgotten which ones you can. But if they're created by a law, you have to repeal the law. And uh, or put, you know, abolish it. And um, we couldn't get anybody to carry the bill. I didn't know that. Yeah. And, uh, and Carter created it, created the Department of Education as a sop to the right. NEA. You support me, I'll support your creation. Why? Why would they support him? Why did they want the creation? Well, it's because when, the, you, when you develop a U.S. department all devoted to this one thing, it simply means you turn on the money spigot. And, you once you turn an industry. It on, and once you turn it on, you can't turn it off. But Reagan say there's nothing closer to immortality than, than a new governmental new program. Government program. That's so true. And so that is the thing. When people ask me anything about, well, how can we have this? How can this have been? I can, nobody wants that. You know, I always say, follow the money because it's true. The, the, uh, you know, for the Democrats and Republicans, Republicans, it's a, Commerce, a Chamber of Commerce thing, it's been there since, the, which again, I, I only really kind of, I didn't realize that, honestly, when I went in. 
that that was the big power issue, uh, controlling the Republicans. And I, I didn't know that. I mean, I, I was, I was, what was I was doing this here, you know? And, and I had far more important things to think about at the Independence Institute at the time. I mean, who am I going to get to succeed me that could possibly who? do the same job? Who? Who could make you look good who by comparison? Who could make me look better? <laughs> you don't know how hard that is. <laughs> I need to find somebody who's going to make me look like a genius right. when I'm gone. Oh, did we have to search? Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I, I did not realize that. I, I actually didn't. I just thought um, it was because they were afraid of the political ramifications and looking bad against Hispanics and all this stuff. And I go, you know, I, I, I have no, people say, you're, you're, you are you're white supremacist. And I go, oh, you go, white, white, come on. Uh, it could be an olive supremacist, maybe, I don't know, Italian. Sure. Uh, but uh, white supremacist, no, it's got nothing, nothing to do with that. And, you know, I, I, wonder, I wonder about a lot of things that we can talk about in terms of immigration, but race is not part of it. What was it that you were hoping to pass? What policy did you want to address the immigration problem? Mind you, this was you know, 25 years For, ago. 40 years ago. Yeah. Oh, well, 40 years. Because yeah. I, I talked about it in the state legislature, yeah. too. Yeah, but what, so what did you want? I mean, the idea of putting up a wall, great, beautiful idea, but it's not going to do anything if you don't have some sort of immigration system that you can enforce, yeah. you know, and that it works. And there's no question in my mind that America needs people. We need people to work. And there are people around the world who want to work. And you know, look at us, a couple, a couple old wops. Yeah. We, if it wasn't, uh, wasn't for the Italians who were willing to come here and work, we wouldn't be here. Do you know so, that more Italians went back home than any other racial group or ethnic group. And you know why? They came back. Because their mothers told them to come <laughs> home. <laughs> That's true too. I never thought about that. But uh, when's no, your mama's boy? No, they got there. You go, I, I don't know. You know, yeah. it's just, I'm not crazy about this for whatever reason. Right. Can't make good spaghetti. I don't know what. But anyway, they went back and uh, in a bigger percentage. Look, John, anybody, you can have an immigration policy. It's no problem. It does not have to be a uh, um, an open door to the world, right. and uh, because there are ramifications to that, as we are seeing, and, and I would talk about this all the time, that you know having a a truly effective immigration policy based on our needs, what we need in this country, not the needs of the world, uh, because that's an op that is unparalleled in terms of what you'd have to provide. Look at what is happening, Denver. Hospital, right? right. Uh, Denver Health and Hospital, $130 million deficit afraid of closing. Um, hospitals all over. Uh, this is a sanctuary city, a sanctuary state. That's what you get. That's what would happen. And not just that, education policy. When I ran for president, I, this is the only issue. I was never going to be president. I was never going to get nominated. I only, But I had enough of a... Here, that's an interesting. How did I get on yeah. to the to the debate stage? Seriously, yeah. they go from North Denver. Are you kidding <laughs> me? <laughs> what? Uh, um, and I mean, believe me, I had the same. I remember standing behind the podium at the at the uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Reagan Library. It was first right. first to, first debate, right? And I'm so scared. Oh my gosh, I was petrified, and I was so I'm glad. I'm imagining that. I imagine. Oh, I can't I imagine you being afraid of oh any public God. event. Oh, oh good. That that natural. Scared. I'm looking down at Nancy Reagan, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> oh yeah, it was scary. And thank God there was a podium. I always thought because they couldn't see my leg shaking, <laughs> you know, the yeah. pant <laughs> going like that. <laughs> oh yeah, I was scared to death, and uh, and there was a good reason. I was, I pretty much made a terrible opening statement <laughs> but uh, the uh, but I got into the debates you have to have some degree of support right. out there not just a little bit you have to have quite a bit 20 some percent to get into the debate right? right well I had it how did I get it because the I was the only person John and I mean this honest to God is true I was the only person talking about it More? everybody was afraid and I mean I know that sounds perhaps uh, kind of blowhardish, but it's the truth. It I would have time. given anything to, to have some support. I thought I would have support. I didn't. And my leadership hated me for it. 
you know, Tom DeLay. Yeah. You keep this up, you little blankety yeah. blank. I thought, little? I'm taller than you, you little <laughs> jerk. <laughs> and he threatened me uh, so many times. And, and good. Threatened you with what? I'll tell you, which, and it tells you everything you need to know about the problem of the system. He had admonished me several times for going around and speaking all over the country because I'd get all these all right. invitations. So now they were always to Republican groups, right? I hardly ever got anything else. I did get a bunch to, uh, to colleges and that always turned into a big riot, yeah. which it really did. Uh, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Wow, it was, that was terrible. Um, but the, um, uh, so he calls me in and because I'd go to speak and I'm in John's district. He's a good Republican, right? And I'm speaking to John's people. <laughs> and somebody inevitably says, how's John on our, on our issue? Oh. <laughs> and I go, John? <clears throat> John, John's crap <laughs> on this issue. And, and I, I didn't make it out of the door. And John was on the phone with the speaker yeah. and with Tom DeLay saying, this Did guy you ever read comes the book into my... How to, how to win friends <laughs> and influence people. people. That, that's not what you do. Uh, he, he comes into my district, Republican, and he disses me. And, and so uh, and they call me in. Oh, my gosh. R read the riot act. And they say, I say, well, what do you want me to say to that question? If John is lousy right. on this, did you want me to go, fine, man. You know, he really thinks deeply about this stuff. And no, he's a jerk. He doesn't, he's, he's opposed. So, and he says to me, Tom says to me, Tom Delay. <laughs> this is so Tancredo. All right. He says, you keep this, and he's got his finger in my, and I thought, you know, that was the worst, that was really a nasty time. Because he'd done it several times, but that was the really, he was really mad. Yeah. And I was thinking, what have, I wonder if they've got our kids. Right. <laughs> you know, they're holding them hostage <laughs> somewhere. I wanted to call Jackie. Where are the kids? Um, and so uh, he says, uh, you keep this up. And I'm thinking, what, he can, what can he possibly? Uh -huh. he says, You're going to ruin your career in this place. <laughs> <laughs> I said, that's it? Yeah, that's it? That's it? Ruined my career in this place. I said, Tom, I don't know how to break this to you. I don't want a career in this place. I don't even like this place. Do you understand that? So that is not a, a, a real, I mean, I didn't go on. That was all I said. Why didn't you like this place? Well, because when you were a congressman, I remember, yeah. I remember uh, talking with you, and you said something to the effect of, uh, yeah, this little lapel pin. Oh, get you I can get, I can get anywhere, open any door in, in Washington, D.C. You see this license plate I've got? I could park on the sidewalk and not get a <laughs> ticket. You know, it, it is a trap. People go there and they love it. Why did you not love it? Well, you, you can get so... You are, in, you are in a remarkably safe, safe yeah. district. Yeah. Well, for the most part, yes, that's true. And so, yeah, I could have stayed there for a long, long time, but I had an issue. I had a cause. It got, and, it, and the more I got into it, right, the more I spoke, the more I got attacked, the more, well, the more I got into it, the more important right. it was. I, and I could see how they hated it. Why? What's, why, what's so hard yeah. to understand when most Americans, Democrats and Republicans at the time, if you'd have just said to John Q. Citizen, do you think we should have secure borders? Do you think it'd be okay to, you know, just check who comes in here and who doesn't? Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you think we should just open it up to the whole damn world? Uh, no. Okay, thank you. Why can't we get that common sense approach toward this issue through Congress? Uh, why can't we get it through a first committee? Why can't every, uh, every time I offer an amendment, I'd get 80 votes maybe and... And that was for, they were from people in the, that, you know, they thought, well, I better throw in a vote here and there, right. just make it look good. Um, so, but I'll tell you the truth. It was no fun after first couple of few years, maybe, I, honestly, it was a kick and the buttons and all the perks and stuff like that it was, it was fun. Um, but after that, I guess maybe I had burned every bridge that there yeah. was to burn and it just wasn't any fun. And. And I thought, I can't do any more here. I really don't believe I can do any more here. Um, and, you know, these people came and said, you got to run for president. Why don't you run for president? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, and, uh, Beats but, working? 
Huh? Beats working. Beats working. Um, and so I thought, hey, that's a great swan song. You know, I'll do that. And that'll be it. Go back home. I'll go back home. So I ran. Did you, ever, did you ever talk to Trump about this? Because he basically picked up where you left yeah, off no, of making I, this an issue. Did, I never did, did you that. need, have you ever met the man? Nope. Then why you walk around with his with his hat on? What because, what, what about it because, speaks to you? Because I, I actually never thought I would see anybody, a president of the United States, that would actually take that issue on, head on. And he did. And I was so proud of him. And I was so happy. Things he'd say. And, and you know, he um, built a wall. Uh, you know, he was building a wall. And the wall is an important part of the process. And what you've got to do... You really want to solve this problem, really? And that's why you'll never see this happen, John, because it would really have a tremendous impact on illegal immigration in a positive way from my standpoint. Um, pass, in, introduce, pass, mandatory E-Verify for every single employer in this country and then, and then actually enforce it. You know, $10,000 fine if you... Ignore it to twice and go to the slam. So in other words, instead of saying, hey, government, you have to enforce the immigration laws, aren't you just telling the poor businessman, the guy who runs the restaurant, now you got to do the job well, because we, government can't do or won't do the job. So now, exactly. now, now you become the Absolutely. Officer. Not unfair. No, it's not unfair. We asked yes, business to do because they're, help, they're breaking the law. And in doing so, you know, it is against the law to hire an illegal alien. You know that. It's been for I don't know how many years. You know, unless you have a green card, unless you... Now, everybody does it. Don't get me wrong. I understand that. But they're breaking the law. So when they break the law, why should you reward them for that uh, if your job is to try and create a system in which uh, laws matter and this will solve a major problem? And it really would. Because if you can't get the thing that you're coming here for, that is the magnet. And it, it was more than it, even it, it wasn't more than it is now. Now there's a lot of different things, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, welfare, you know, free phones, uh, all that kind of thing. But but we, if we could do that and really and truly enforce it, honestly, you would see a major reduction in that particular. And you'd have, you could open up. You could do a lot more with immigration for, for heard, people who need it. Fine. I've heard someone once say, you know, it's. It's not the state of immigration, it's the welfare state. The difference when America's had huge, uh, massive spikes in immigration is that people came here and they had to rely on their relatives. They had to rely on their, their friends. There was a social network yeah. that kept them alive. They couldn't just show up here by, them, by yeah. themselves. And when they were here, they had to work, otherwise they'd starve. That's right. It was very cruel. And I think about, our ancestors, ancestors, and that's, exactly. that's you know, I'm a, sort of daughter of the revolution, uh, uh, <laughs> blood in me. And so, you know. Um, Viva Zapata, who, yeah. maybe I was there. You know, my, so I'm half Polish and half Italian. Oh, okay. And, uh, so I, I was once able to make myself an offer I, I couldn't understand. <laughs> um, and so on my, on my Polish side, I think it was my great grandfather, came over on a boat and it had some sort of disease on it. So it, they would not let him off in New York. And they kept having to go south. And, he was 18 at the time, until they could find a port that would let them uh, disembark. And they finally found one in Brazil. So you think about the difference in the time. Wow. This is, this is, this Pollock had to work well, you his understand, way. understand, you know, you wouldn't want to yeah. pollute the you know, society. <laughs> with, with those Polish. Polacks. <laughs> too much kibasi. <laughs> and this guy had to work his way, not knowing the language, from Brazil all the way up into this tiny farm town in New York State, where the family was, mm. you know, and I think about that. Sure. And there was no, there was no um, system there to say, you know, we're going to help you with this. We're going to make it easy for you. And I understand the, the, the push to do that. That's what I mean. But by... there's, there's 7 billion, 8 billion people on this planet. Who doesn't want to live here? Right. And by the way, I'm, I'm much more um, uh, open to immigration than, than you are, but you cannot do it with a welfare You're young. state. You, you'll, you, I'll, I'll get over you, it. You get over no, but I, I, I think we agree on the same sort of thing. We want people here. There are jobs that, that Americans just won't do anymore. Um, but you just can't 
you can't have them come here, not work. You cannot have them be uh, uh, refugees from the entire planet. Yeah. We, do, we just can't do it. That's true. And that's what I meant when I said it's different now with all the, the you know, the, the enticement of the, even the, the little things, the freebies of the phones and the, and the, and the apartments and, uh, uh, I mean, hotels and food and, you know, and, and uh, education for your kids. That's and, a big one. And health care. So, um, gosh, John, there's so many things I keep remembering. But going back to the, for a minute, to the um, presidential race. Yeah. Um, so, I, 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 for whatever reason, I had a, a, a sort of a name around the country and I had a, enough 27% support. So yeah. I uh, got in. Well, so again, I'm scared to death. And we, for like two weeks at least, we practice in my office, the staff, answering every imaginable question, whatever the hell, with immigration related, you know. I think I know the story. Illegal Keep going. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, I pra- and, and it's not that hard, really. If you want to bring up a question of education, don't worry. I'll tell you what the impact is. Healthcare, I'll tell you what the impact is. Um, just uh, uh, socialization, uh, language, all, all that stuff. I could do it. So I thought I was pretty well, you know, prepared. And so I get there and, and I'm listening to all these questions. And every one, every question, I think, I could have done. I could have done a better I job. I could have knocked that one out of the ballpark, man. You know, <laughs> and, and, and didn't come to me. Okay, I'm waiting. Forty-five minutes. I'm a potted plant, right over on this side. I think was it Ron? Um, oh, I can't remember the guy on the other end, but he was just as bad. He was a nobody and uh, like me, so they didn't get many questions. Everything went to the. I uh, already said the tall guys with good hair, right? You know, and so finally. Chris Matthews says, Congressman Dan Credo, uh, we have a question for you. And I, I don't remember if he said it was from the audience or what. It was so stupid it could have been from uh, him. <laughs> and so he said, uh, and I'm thinking, hmm, okay, illegal immigration, illegal immigration, don't forget you can do this, Tom. And he goes, if you're elected president, what will you do to increase the number of organ donors? <laughs> 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 I didn't know you can look a... this up. I mean, it's all out there. On I wish it wasn't. I wish it was all buried somewhere. But, and <laughs> I, I think the first statement I made to the American public that I was trying to get them to vote for me for president was, "What? Yeah, what? What? <laughs> Organ donors? <laughs> oh my God!" And, and I did not go to illegal immigration. Okay. I didn't you, go there. Because uh, knowing you, you would have said, we could harvest them well, that's from illegal expect, immigrants. That's what everybody expects, I right. know, but I didn't go there. And uh, and I said, oh, we'll make a market or some stupid thing. I, I don't know. It was just, and, and I thought, oh, my God, my first, the first, that's what I'm telling you. It was a disaster. It got better because we got a question about about McCain. Oh, my goodness. That was a really good one. I got to, I got to zap him. What did you zap him? I'm glad you asked so uh, um, the um, he, he oh here's a hypothetical for everybody for all you all the people I mean all, all the candidates um, hypothetical um, three bombs have gone off in the United States fourth one we think is there's another one going and it's the big one. And, with, and it's uh, uh, Islamic terrorists that are going to do it. Um, what well, would you water? Oh, oh, and we have somebody right. in th- that we are holding captive that is um, has the information. Has the would information. you torture them? Would you waterboard? Would you waterboard? Them? Right, uh, McCain. Okay, now remember, this is the only guy on the stage who had even been in the service, right? <laughs> let alone in the Hanoi Hilton. And he said. Um, Absolutely not. It was a terrible idea. That is rotten. Blah, blah, blah. It's not American. And beside which you can't get good information. And I'm like, thank God, as I say, I'm on the end. Because it gave me time to think. And I thought, well, you son of a gun. I said, I thought to myself, I read your book. And in his book, he talks about the most horrible thing he ever did in his whole life was make 
uh, tapes for the Vietnamese. He, he right. yeah, did a lot of things. Now, believe me, I'm not suggesting, and, and I didn't want to then, that I would have survived torture better than he did. I mean, hell, if they, they probably opened up the cell door and I'd start yelling out names. I don't know. Right. But, but I don't think I'd be too tough. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm just this little guy, but, and he was there. But, but nonetheless, I just thought I'm going to, because I'm not going to say that I wouldn't waterboard. I most certainly would. And so, ba-boom, ba-boom, no, 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 oh, absolutely not. If John says no, right. like I say, he's the only guy that's even served what are we talking about? So it gets to me, and I said, uh, <clears throat> well, I uh, got this straight, three bombs and fourth, yeah, and, we, and you want if I waterboard? I said, I not only would waterboard, I'd be looking for Jack Bauer. <laughs> now, probably <laughs> your folks listening don't know, but... That was a TV show, 24, and 24. He, he would torture people. <laughs> yeah, oh, he, he was a CIA guy, and you know, he was going to go, I want to know this. You want to talk, boom, knee, shoot your knee <laughs> Are you going to talk? No. Boom. The other. <laughs> I like that guy. And, and so uh, I said, I'm looking for Jack Bauer. Well, there's some tittering in the audience, a few people, you know, and that was it. Okay. Months after, I don't know where, I think we were in New Hampshire, another debate. Question came up. Nothing to do, nothing to do with that terrorism or anything like that. Education, some thing. And, he, and McCain goes, well, I could be flippant about it and say, I'll get Jack Bauer to handle it. Oh, you got under his skin. Oh, man. Oh, man. It was like months later. And everybody's looking around like, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> Jack Bauer to handle this? And, you, and so, oh, but he had, it, getting under his skin was not a problem. I heard that everyone in Congress, oh. particularly everyone in the Senate, has their own McCain story. They do. Where McCain has chased you down a hallway or has they got in a fight with his own constituents, a fist fight with his own constituents on the cast, Capitol stairs. The, the Capitol Police had to break it up <laughs> over this issue, over immigration. And, and I mean, oh gosh, there was a member, great guy in the House, and, and uh, he had actually been in the Hanoi Hilton with McCain. Really? All the stuff he said. And I've given speeches where I told the story I just told you. And the people come up afterwards and they go, you know, I was with, I served with John McCain. And I'd go, I always think I'm going to get busted here. Right. <laughs> They're going to knock me on my butt. And they go, he is a big age queen. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> hey, we've only got a couple minutes here. Let me, let me. What? How, how can well, that be? How can I've that be? I've only got two or three things, words out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guy, open up the refrigerator door, the light comes on, you do 10 minutes. The, um. <laughs> Talk to me about uh, Trump. I I cannot believe how Trump handled January 6th. I can't really get past that one. Really? Yeah, for me it was, you know, I'm not saying I'm not going to vote for him, but there are people climbing on the walls of the, of, of the Capitol trying to stop official business. And I'm not going into this stolen election or that he was trying to be a dictator. Or, or how like many... That. Uh, agents provocateur were right, actually yeah, in. Right. You're not getting into that. No, okay. I'm not getting into that. But, All right, because we don't know who was going up on the wall. We don't know. I mean, there's a lot of you know, but, 200 agents. But for three hours, for the president not to say something, not to tell his <laughs> his supporters, hey, we don't do this. You know that. I can't imagine Reagan not doing that. I can't no, he imagine wasn't Reagan. Reagan. Right. Yeah, he's not I can't Reagan. Reagan. I can't imagine anybody sitting by while the, the Capitol is being ransacked by whomever and not making a comment to, to, uh, to, to stop it. Well, of course... Will you agree with me on that? No. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that we could see that, uh, that we would want him to, to make a, a statement. He did make a statement before they went when he was talking to them initially. You know, go peacefully. He did say peacefully. He, but for three hours, he's sitting there watching TV and never, thinking, never once yeah. said... Look at those guys. They're all my fit. You know, yeah, I know. they're all, I, yeah. Yeah. You know, I understand. He, and he really and, and believed. He had, he, he had the moral persuasion to speak to most of these people. All right. You know, to, to, you know. God, does that mean he incited, do you believe he incited insurrection? Oh, God, no. Uh, no. Do you think that was an insurrection? I have never no. seen an insurrection in the history of the world where nobody brought a gun. <laughs> right? Well, and the only person killed, the only person killed, they say, no, the only person murdered in that entire event 
was an unarmed 110 pound woman that was absolutely crawling through a, you know, a, a space in the, the uh, Ashley Babbitt and, the, and a cop, a, I don't even want to call him that, murders her, puts a gun at her head and shoots her in the head as she's on her knees, unarmed woman coming through. That's the only murder that happened. And what did he get for it? A raise, his name hidden from the public for a year, uh, increased, in, I mean, some other, he bumped up in, in where, wherever he was in the pecking order. Yeah, this is a murderer. That's the only one that happened in I'm, this insurrection. Well, I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing with you. In fact, if this was an insurrection, yeah. then what happened in uh, Wisconsin oh. when, they, when the teachers took over the uh, uh, Capitol, not just for three hours, but for days, Oh yeah. Uh, then that must have been a civil war. Listen, I've been in right. how many uh, committees in Congress have I been sitting in when something called Code Pink goes nuts. It's a bunch of old bags that wear pussy hats oh, and right. other thing and scream and yell. You have to get the cops, get them out. They shut down everything. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, that was a lot. That was right there in Congress at the time we were in session. This wasn't, I mean, we were near in the session. They got everybody out, right? They were all scared. Oh, BS. Uh, um, there's so many things to go through with it. That I issue. know, I know. Uh, my, my point was, just, oops, sorry. I didn't mean to slap. No, that's a, my point was that the president should have said yes. Something. Okay, that's all Ad I said. Admittedly, all I right. said the I'll, president. I'll give you that. The president, he you know, was the president, okay. and he had. I think he had a responsibility of leadership that day to he probably to protect did, the, the systems of government. You're right. I did. will give you that, John. I had, you know, I've got this little nice shirt that my wife gave me. It says, "2022, I survived cancer, two brain surgeries, COVID." Prostate surgery and Biden. <laughs> and Biden. <laughs> she had that made. Okay, it's great. I, I love it. One of the, or those two brain surgeries, I had, you know, the day that I was declared cancer free, I got in a wreck. <laughs> yep, I remember. My own, well. my pregnant pro, I didn't hit anybody. I was going through in this parking lot, hit a, hit a, 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 a curb type thing, smashed my face into the steering wheel because I wasn't wearing a, a seatbelt and ended up with. In the hospital, I mean, you know, I thought it was just this lip all got, uh, right. but it, it, I had to go to the hospital. My wife said, we had to get to the emergency. You're bleeding all over. Said, ah, I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. No, you're not fine. Your blood's all over the place. You're spurting head. Okay, I'll go. Come on, get in. No, you can't drive. Yes, I'm going to drive. I drive to the. I drive to the emergency room. Again, ladies and gentlemen, only Tom. <laughs> get out of the car. Get in there. They're working on me. And that's about the last thing I remember because it turns out I had a subdermal hematoma, blood on the brain. And so uh, uh, I end up, uh, last thing, that's, I, I don't know because I don't even know how they knew for sure. They must have taken an MRI or something when I was, uh, and all I know is ambulance to the, to back to, back to the hospital, right? <laughs> you know, the, the nurse is going, Didn't you just what are you this doing? Morning? What are you doing back here? I said, I miss the food. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, uh, I, and, and, and we have this, I had a whole bunch of neurologists come in, um, and one guy, his name is Elliot, not a pleasant guy, no bedside manner to this be, except un, un, you know, just, uh, un, unlikable. And my wife, she just got so mad at him because he just, they would ignore, her. I'm going to do this, we're going to, tomorrow morning we're operating on, you know. Uh, he operates. I, I, six weeks later, I go back in. They had to do it twice. It wasn't his fault. It was a nurse that put the, the, one of the stints in wrong. And um, I go back in six weeks later, and he goes, you know, for the, you know, how, how's it going? And, and how's it healing and everything? And he has his phone, and he goes, uh, see that? That's your brain. Uh, right now and it's perfectly healed everything's good if you don't do anything else stupid you don't have to come back and see me again <laughs> and then as he does he and i'm like oh yes sir I, and he says damn i'm good <laughs> <laughs> and, and he was and i would and, and if i have un, dear god i don't want to ever have another you know time to see him but if i need somebody i'm going to that guy he was brilliant he was great trump i don't want to ever necessarily have coffee with him or whatever. I don't, I really, I really don't care what he tweets. 
I never cared. I never read a single tweet of Trump. Never. I, I just didn't care. It's not important to me. What's important to me? What's he doing on immigration? What's he doing on the economy? What's he doing for black and brown uh, uh, unemployment rates? What's he doing for interest rates? What's he doing for around the world? The guy was nominated five times for a, a, a Nobel Peace Prize, right? And and of course, nobody's going to give it to him. They give it to Obama. We walked in the room. He said, oh, Obama, you thought that was a peaceful move. Give him a peace prize. No, Trump will never get it. But nominated five times, people around the world, not, not anybody necessarily here. You know, that's a worldwide thing. But he did. We had peace, John. We had peace. Uh, no wars. People respected us. I look at all that stuff. That's what matters to me. And if I have to vote again uh, for a guy I don't necessarily like, uh, I'm going to vote for him because those are the policies that I want from a president. I want a better country. I have a bumper sticker I'm having made. Um, if you want one, I'll be happy to put it on your car because you won't do it. I know that. Uh, <laughs> but it says, says, kind of a big one, it says, I miss the America I grew up in, the one that even the Democrats loved. Which goes back to my original point about what happened in the state legislature when we never argued about the essence of America. But now it's everything. Hatred of America, hatred of everything that was that is part of our culture, the things that absolutely, you know, I mean, they want to stop Thanksgiving. They you name it, they anything, anything that that is a spark of Americana, they want it, they want so, to destroy. Let me put it this way and tell me if, if you think I've got it right. Difference between now and then is back then we had arguments over how to reach a goal, but we had the same goal. goal. Yeah. And today it seems like there's two different goals. Totally. One is uh, an America based on the founders' principles of liberty and property, free speech. And the other one is one of a command and control society of central planning. And it's two completely different, different exactly. worlds. Exactly. That's exactly right, John. Um, the Colorado Education Association, the teachers union, uh, passed this resolution just a short time ago. And this exemplifies what you're saying perfectly, I think. Because you would, you would think the teachers, even the teachers union, wouldn't go this far. Right. But this is what they did and said for public consumption. Uh, recently, the largest uh, teachers union uh, recently voted for a resolution stating that, quote, the CEA believes that capitalism requires exploitation of children, public schools, land, labor, and or resources. Capitalism is, the, is in opposition to fully addressing systemic racism, paren, school to prison pipeline, close paren, climate change, patriarchy, Print gender and LB, LGBTQ disparities, close quote, education inequality and income inequity. These are the people that the government forces us to send our kids to That's right. for the majority of their time. Yeah, if, if look, if you don't, you can look this up and you can see what they passed. What next, please do me this favor. Next time you go to a parent teacher, bring it in, show yeah. it to the teacher who's teaching your child and say, do you buy this? And are you a member of this organization? Because if, if they say, no, they don't, then they should quit tomorrow, quit today. But this is exactly what we're talking about. It is a socialist organization. About. This is what we're talking about. This is a teacher's union telling this country, telling their parents and the children that they're going to, they're teaching that this system, capitalism, is the cause of all of this stuff, right? Uh, <laughs> and you know, and not, you, not the cause for us having the greatest quality of life known to in human history. And, and the, the, you know, that they're getting paid. I mean, not all teachers, but a, a large number of them are getting paid a very handsome salary. Uh, when you put in the benefits, they're all making a very good salary. You bet your when life. You in, and you where, I'd like to see how much they make in, in North Korea. Come on, you know, it's a bowl of rice maybe. All right, uh, all right. Oh, last question. You want your old job back here? Oh. Somebody's got to do it. Because <laughs> the floor knows it's not going to be me. <laughs> Tom, thanks so much. Always a kick. Likewise. If you enjoyed that conversation, by all means, click one of these other great programs. We have the best conversations with the most fascinating Coloradans. 
and subscribe to our channel. Just click down below and hit that little bell button too. You don't want to miss a single show.